we'll have the incredible opportunity to see a performance of Wenton, your original composition, All Rise. Uh, All Rise is a 12 movement symphony built on the structure of the blues that moves from uplifting and energetic to dark and distressing uh, through Wenton's vision of the togetherness and ascendance of humanity, drawing joy out of tragedy and refusing to be beaten down. Wenton, what can you tell us about the genesis of this piece, uh, which premiered right before the millennium, and the process of mounting it again here now through this extended residency that we're so glad to have you here for? When I was 28 or 29, I was playing in Detroit, and a maestro, Kurt Mazur of the New York Philharmonic came. His son, Tomas, was a trumpet player. He stood in line and waited at the end. He talked to me and said, friend, I want you to write a piece for the New York Philharmonic. <laughs> I started to laugh. I said, man, I, don't, I haven't even written a piece for a big band. I'm not gonna write anything for the New York Philharmonic. And this man, every time I saw him on the campus of Lincoln Center, he would say, are you still afraid to write for the New York Philharmonic? Are you still afraid to write for the New York Philharmonic? So it started to aggravate me. I'm not afraid to write for the New York Philharmonic. I've done, I didn't study composition and all this stuff. Are you afraid, friend, to write for the New York Philharmonic? So finally, I took like 10 years to just go slowly through, write for, learn how to write for a big band, learn how to write for the woodwind instruments, learn how to, because I was working the entire time, just taking on different pieces that would allow me to write a string quartet, write a piece to how, to, how to write for these instruments. I grew up playing a lot of different music, so I was aware of, you know, the great pieces in orchestral tradition, but to write for orchestra is very different from listening to it. Then finally, around 98, I said, okay, I think I could write for the Philharmonic. And he said, I want you to write a piece around the turn of the millennium. So I went to his office for the meeting. What, what do you want me to write about? He said, you know, friend, uh, I was a Nazi soldier. Okay, now I wasn't ready to hear him say that. Because <laughs> almost nobody ever says that. <laughs> In my entire life, that's the single time I've been told that. <laughs> so I was like, hmm, okay. He said, there's something you don't understand about that time period. He said, there was a lot of cheering. There was a lot of cheering, friend. And he, of course, was not a fan of the war, but I said, well, how would you end up? He said, it's either that or you weren't there. Like, it wasn't like you were choosing. That's what you did. And he was a paratrooper. That most of his group got wiped out. It was like, I think, 11 out of... I forget the exact number, 80-something, and he was one of the, he ended up going on to be famous ma maestro of the uh, Leipzig Gewandhaus Orchestra, which is the tradition of Brahms, and he championed kind of freedom in the East, and at one point they wanted him to be the leader of East Germany, a voice for, for freedom and for the rights of people. And he said, what happened to George Gershwin and Leonard Bernstein and the people who tried to bring the kind of black-white American conundrum together? He said, I noticed that doesn't exist anymore. Can you write a piece that will bring us together and something that will allow us to use our forces and your forces and give us something difficult to play? Don't write like, you know, strings, make us play something. So I was so shocked by just the whole kind of meeting. So I thought about it. I said, yeah, I'll try to, I'll try to do that. And he said, you can have the whole evening. So that's like an hour and a half, man. <laughs> you have no idea what it's like to try to write for an hour and a half if you haven't done that you have to account for what everybody of like 90 people does every dot every dash I mean it took me like a month just putting dots and dashes over music and sforzandos and accents because in jazz we we have an outline and we talk through stuff with this you don't do no talking if something is not graphically represented it's not so we did this piece and man when we played it it was the worst thing you ever heard in your life and I mean, the Philharmonic was trying to play it because a lot of them were, were friends of mine from, we went to camps together. When I finished that night, it was like right before the turn of the millennium, I thought, man, we got this, all this hard music, it's gonna be great. It was absolutely terrible. I just sat on the stage and just thought, how could I have miscalculated this much of this and write something this sad? And then we had a, a, a performance scheduled to play with the Czech Philharmonic 10 months later. I was trying to cancel it. Man, we got to get out of this. We can't go over there and commit a crime. And we can't go internationally and commit crimes like this. We, that one criminal act was enough. Because you have no idea. I'm sitting up there playing it too. So I feel like the whole people, everybody's looking at me like, man, how could you subject us to this for an hour and a half? Are you that egocentric? You know? And then when we played it in, uh, 
And, and when we played it in the Czech Republic, man, it was much better. And the music is strange, like how we can just, over time, the playing stuff, it gets better. And over the years, you know, we played it. We don't play it a lot, but you know, we played it in different places. Went on tour, playing it throughout France. It's always to big effect, you know, the, the people always like it, and orchestras like it, because their parts, they have difficult parts to play. And uh, that's, the message of it is written in the, in the words of it. And it's a universal humanism, but it, it's, it's complex, and it took a lot of time. And, uh, and I still get tired sometimes just looking at it and say, okay, thank the good Lord.